Have you started? Yes. Okay, first of all, biggest problem with 3D Home Architect is if the icon is not on the computer, then people do not know where to find it. Okay? Secondly, if they cannot find the icon, it could be because they are not logged on as a VOC student. V-O-C. If you just log in as an LMS student, it will not work. So you log in, username VOC, V-O-C, password student. If you're logging in as an LMS student, it doesn't bring you to my programs. It's a different user profile. I have it set up where you have to be a VOC student to use these. Okay? So if you can't find it, that's the number one reason why. The second reason is if you look here under 3D Home Architect, maybe you get that, make sure you get that icon 3D Home Architect right there. If you cannot find that icon, you can go down to the bottom and go to, you know, here's the, the 3D Home Architect icon. Not all of them have the icon there. Some of them, it might be on the desktop. A sure way to do it is to go to All Programs and then go to Broader Bund Home Products. Okay, this is made by Chief Architect. That's the professional version, which is about a thousand dollar program. But they sold 3D Home Architect, which is the public version, a cheap kind of a trial version. 3D Home Architect is not the powerful program that Chief Architect is. Okay, I've been to the training for Chief Architect. It's, that program's written in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and they will give free training to teachers on it. And it's the same program, but it's what uh, architects really use. Okay? So I go to all programs, Broader Bun Home Products, 3D Home Architect Deluxe. Don't go to the registration. Don't go to the pro tips, to the plan folder, to the readme file or the uninstall. Go to the program folder. Click on that. Okay? I, you guys should know about minimizing and maximizing windows by now. I have maximized that window, maximized the big box over here, minimized the small one. Okay, so I maximize it. Uh, you can also maximize and minimize just your plan. So if you have multiple plans open, you can minimize them. If you have like a 3D one and you want to flip over to your other home plan, you can do that. Just like generic CAD, it has most of the icons up at the top. It has a drag down menu and it has a work area. This is like your piece of paper here. Okay? Most CAD programs have that much in common. They have a drag down menu, a tool palette with the icons. This is the menu, this is the sub menu, and then they have the work area like your piece of paper. Also, make note down here it, it, there is a message line that tells you what to do next. Watch this. The program that I'm, or the, uh, the object I'm gonna draw for you now is one I actually drew and I built this shop at my house. I saved about $1,200 by doing it myself. Okay, uh, first you go to the arrow button. The arrow button is used. It tells you to select items. I didn't have any items there to select yet. So I go to the next button. The next one in is the wall tool. For practice, I ask everybody make a 30 foot by 40 foot shop. Just because this is the, a realistic size and it is the size of the shop at my house I built. And if you make it too big, like yesterday someone had one that was like 450 feet, what will happen, you'll get in a lot of trouble because it will it will not detect a wall close enough to where you're clicking on, okay? So what I did here, I made it 40 feet across, 30 foot this way. Three times four is 12. Add the two zeros on there, and you have a 1,200 foot, 1200 square foot shop, okay? Three by four is 12, and then it's really 30 by 40, so you have two extra zeros to add on. 1,200 is also the average size home in America, 1,200 square feet. You probably know about the scroll bars here already, up and down scroll bars. Uh, I need to scroll down a little bit so I can see the bottom of my plan. I'm going to come over this way about 40 feet. As long as I'm close, it'll work just fine. I'm now going to zoom the magnifying glass. I go to the zoom window, and here's the sub menu. Here's what the different ones do. You can pick an area, area to zoom, 
if you want to work on like one corner of the shop. Uh, that one undoes the last zoom. This one makes everything half its size. Okay, I like the last one. If you look in the message line, it says redraw the plan as large as possible while still fitting it in the window. In other words, it's going to put it in the, your usable work area. Okay, now I continue with my wall going down this way. Usually if you're close, it will snap together like there it finally did. I now finished my wall, so I'm going to do the door tool. I click on the door tool. Over here, when I just scroll across the door tools and the submenu, it tells us what type of doors they are. A bifold door, a pocket door. Pocket doors slide into the wall, which are nice because they don't take up any area with their swing, but they're hard to install on existing construction because you have to frame them up into the wall. So they're tough to do. I'm going to show you my garage doors now. There's garage door one. Click on it and I have two garage doors on my shop. One there and one there. Now I want to make them bigger so I click on it and I can drag the sides out to make it bigger. I want mine 144 inches. That's pretty close to that right there. That's 12 feet wide. For getting a boat or a motorhome in, you want extra space. Also, if I want to make the garage door taller, I double click on it and I go over here to width and height and I make it, I'm going to make it 12 by 12. Okay, 144, wrong keyboard, <laughs> uh, 144 inches. Okay, I could have also done things like draw it closed put glass panes into it, okay? Window tools here. Um, you can notice you can also do other types of windows. There's many fancy types of windows in there you can do. Or you can choose a window from your library. Okay? Library is where you make your own windows. All right? Next, the cabinets. I know I've done this before, but I'm going to do it time and time again. And this time you'll be able to see it online, so if you need extra practice, you'll just be able to click on it and go to it. There's one cabinet there, another cabinet here, and another cabinet there. Okay, that one goes across there. I'm just showing you how you can modify the cabinets. And I'm doing this just like my shop because it has a work area back here. Um, fixtures, I don't really have any fixtures in there. Uh, I do have a water cooler right over here. If I want to view it, I can view it like that. I take it and I put the water cooler right about there. The furniture, mostly outdoor furniture in here, like lawnmowers, garages, autos, cars. Looks like a family truckster is what that one looks like. So I put the car there. Um, I could put, you know, lawn equipment in there. There's under furniture, you can go to like miscellaneous and you can do recreation, gaming, ping pong table, view it, okay. I'm going to go here, it's right about there. Um, outdoor library for different outdoor things, miscellaneous, a wood bridge, a mailbox, whatever you want. Um, the next one over here, as you can see, it's more outdoor image like trees. This one's a fireplace. Stairs. I don't really have stairs, but I do have like a ladder in the corner here. To go up, I have a balcony above this. Uh, to build a roof, you just click the roof tool to make the roof. You can change the pitch of it and everything. Okay. And now we have electrical outlets to put your electrical in, and here's other electrical outlets like switch, fixtures, T is for text if you want to write something here like work area, you could do that, or workbench, place it there. Uh, this is for measuring, if you want to measure your work area and say, well, how, much, how big is my work area? Is it big enough? This eyeball is if you want to go in there and look in the direction of your work area and kind of just see if everything's looking okay. Okay, an example of when that doesn't look okay, I minimize that now and I go back to this plan. 
And if I look at it now, I can go to 3D and I go to full overview. This is when you realize sometimes things don't look right. The garage door is 12 feet tall. The roof is only 9 feet tall. So you have 3 feet of extra garage door trying to stick up there. That would mean you'd have to go in and change the height of your uh, room. Okay, so now I would go in here and I just double click or right click in the room or on a wall. I think I have to go back to the message or to the selection tool. Click on it, wall specifications, roof at wall. Um, I could, if I right click in the room, this is the room name, the floor height and the ceiling height, 96 inches. I better change that to 144, okay? And then that would take care of that problem. Now, if it probably won't look like it takes care of it when I go back to plan overview because I have not refreshed it yet. It's still, I'd have to go in and refresh it. Number one thing that kids ask about is how do I get back to my original plan? You can minimize this. And then you can see I have multiple plans open here. But if I have this one open and then I change my ceiling height, it doesn't know that, so I have to start closing those if I want a big change like that. Okay, because this still thinks the ceiling height's a certain height of 8 feet, for instance. Okay, second most common thing, how do you change the color? This is a rainbow here. So if I go, oh, my ping pong table should really be a different color, like green. I have to adjust the color palettes. Click that. I go OK. OK. And I change the color of the ping pong table. And I guess I must have hit the car, too. <laughs> you can also use your arrows here to look around. Do like a 360 degree view. OK. You can zoom in and zoom out. You can even make a little movie. And you can make a movie of a walkthrough of your home. Okay? Just last night, Mr. Denton, Riley Denton's father, he asked if he could borrow the program. He's doing some work on someone's house. He does most of his work on this one. Second common thing that people ask, how do I make a second floor? You go to three, no, you go to window, and you go to show floors. But it is ghosted out right now because I have not saved my plan yet. Until I save my plan, it will not let me make a second floor. Okay? So um, if I go on here and I go now to window, show floors, it's going to say your new plan has not been saved. You must save it first and then try to show floors. When that show floors comes up, then you can just take and choose another floor. Okay? So I would go file. Let me open one and show you an example. Okay. Okay. 3D Home Architect Deluxe. There. Open. Plans. Okay, that one's been saved. So if I went over here, it says it has a living area of 562 square feet. If I went over here to window and I went show floors, here we go. Now notice it's saying, do you want a second floor? Do you want a foundation? Do you want a basement? I want to build a second floor. So I derive the second floor plan from the first floor plan. Okay, and now I go okay, and this is the second floor now. So we can move back and forth between first floor and second floor. For instance, if I put a, uh, um, let's say, a door on this side here, and then I, on the bottom floor, was going to put a second, uh, or maybe a garage door on the bottom, on the basement, you couldn't put a could not put a garage door on the top floor. So I would go to show floor, 